Hello. Now then, I'm hoping I'm live, but I'm using some new equipment. So what I'm going to do is just make sure that the Facebook page is linked up because I can't see any comments on here for a minute. So bear with me, but fingers crossed, I'm live on Facebook. So bear with me. Let's see if it's working. Hopefully, yay, I think it's working. Okay. So I can't read the comments on the screen that I'm looking at in front of me, but I'm going to have a little look on my phone. So if I am looking away, I'm just trying to get all of this sorted. But if you are watching, say hello. Let me know that I've got some of you watching. It's always nice to know where you're from, especially as there's so many of you from all around the world. So I'll just give it a couple of minutes for people to hopefully find this and watch, fingers crossed. It's a bit strange. <laughs> I've got so many bits of equipment going on at the moment. So... We will see how that goes. So let me just get this all set up. There we go. Okay, so I've got Maria on so far. Um, you have to bear with me because my lovely friend Claire, who is called Claire, she's not what she is called Claire, obviously, she's called the Paint Along Lady. And she is an absolute wizard doing all of this. And she is giving me a quick fast track demo of how to do this. I've got lots of equipment going on around. And the exciting thing is, is I'm able to switch between screens so we can actually watch what is gonna go on with a pattern cutting. Um, so thank you, Claire, for helping me, get me all set up. And hopefully this will work. I'm really hoping it will. So I'm just gonna set this to all comments. Lovely. Oh, brilliant. We've got lots of you watching. Excellent. So we've got, who have we got? Oh, loads of you. Lovely. From Dublin, Northumberland. I can't speak Northumberland even. Uh, Pembrokeshire. Greetings from the liquid rain. It is absolutely throwing it down outside in Swansea. Uh, Devon. Oh, there we go. We've got Indian South Wales. Craft Group Stitch and Bitch are watching. Oh, lovely. Hello, everybody. Uh, hello, Claire. Claire is watching, Claire, the paint along lady. She's amazing. Um, next time, I'm hoping that this is the one step where I've got everything set up here and hopefully next time it'll be even more slick because <laughs> I'm gonna get a fast track demo with the paint along lady. So uh, say hello, let me know where you're from, where you're watching, and I'm gonna do a little demonstration today uh, based on the book. So I thought I'd do a little introduction first. For those of you that haven't, uh, or maybe I've only just joined the group, there's there's almost 2,000 of you now in the group, which is absolutely crazy. I can't believe it's it's gone that big. But my name's Helen Rhiannon. I am the author of Dressmaking the Easy Guide, and it is fast becoming a really fantastic sellout book, which is just fantastic, obviously. Um, it took four years to write, for those of you that don't know, my background is a designer. So I've designed and made wedding dresses and all different types of bespoke outfits for, I think, coming up to 19 years now. So it's quite a long, long, long time of being a designer. And I've also run workshops as well for the past 15 plus years. And where the book has come from is the constant frustration of people bringing projects to workshops and the fit is never right having to try and adapt a garment at the end, which is always really difficult. And just that most patterns only go up to a set size. So most people are quite limited when you're past say 16, 18. It is better now, but this book is for everybody. And the whole point of it is, is to get everybody making patterns, making dresses that will actually suit their shape and their body, whether you are a size six or your size UK 44, and that also goes with the EU and American charts as well. So um, the reason why, oh, so many, I definitely won't be able to reply to your messages because I, I will keep an eye out on everything, um, but I will have to kind of just see how I do this. But let me just see. So if you have got any questions, fire them over, <laughs> but we'll have to see how far we get with this only turn that down. Okay, so it's live, brill. Um, so, what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to be talking a little bit about the pattern cutting. So again, those of you that are only just tuned into the Facebook Lives now, there are a few that I've done before now, which are um, last week's one was how to measure yourself and getting you all set up on, on just being able to find the right way of measuring yourself and then actually being able to alter your actual sample when you make it, the twirl up onto the mannequin. And the other big thing that everyone has been struggling with is the actual tracing off your size 
and being able to actually draft between sizes because not many of us are actually the same size and not many of us are the same size top and bottom. So what my plan today is, hopefully, is to actually show you how I draft, uh, how I trace off the block more like from the book. And if you are between sizes, how that actually looks when you do it on paper. So hopefully, fingers crossed, you'll be able to see what I'm doing. I finally set this up now on here so I can see everyone watching. Oh, we've got Spain as well, Spain. And then we've got Helen and Asta La Vera. I love it, a real mix of places. Uh, so hello, everybody watching. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is get my patterns out. So if you are, if you are new to the book, then, and you haven't got your book yet, then the book is currently, I just had news today, the book is actually due to me on Friday, so late on Friday. So if you have pre-ordered a copy, I will be doing, packing them all up over the weekend, ready to send the start of next week. So there are a couple of hundred books, there's 350 books at the moment, so you will have to bear with me, but uh, we will be packing them up and getting them all set, uh, ready to send out the start of next week. If you haven't ordered a book yet, I have been told the stock that are coming back are already allocated. So I've got, I think, 50 copies left. So if you do want to pre-order a book, please make sure you get on and do that from my website so that you have your book. Because the next lot are coming back mid-September. Uh, so I'll post a link to this afterwards. Oh, there's lots of you here, which is really lovely. Fantastic. And France as well. Oh, I love how you all just, it's like uniting the whole sewing world. It's brilliant. Um, and I obviously have to mention that the sewing bee is on tonight. For those of you in the UK, the final of the sewing bee is later tonight. So um, obviously there is no spoilers. I don't know who everybody thinks is going to win. I'm, I'm between Asma and Mia. I don't know. We'll see. Looking forward to watching that later. Anyway, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you my little setup in a sec here. Again, bear with me with all this. I'm just going to open up my patterns. So I have got my bodice. So I'm going to get the bodice pattern. And I'm going to get the skirt patterns out to demo with you. And I'm just going to place this to one side. So there will be a little bit of going back and forth with this because obviously there is, you know, I'm going to be doing this live. So front bodice, here we go. Them. So those of you who haven't seen the book, this is the book, Dressmaking the Easy Guide. In the back of the book, you have full scale patterns. So you have everything in here. Have we got, hello everybody, looking forward to learning a lot. Hope so, Ooh, no pressure. Um, but in the back of the book, you have your full scale blocks. Now, for those of you without the book, it will make, make a little bit less sense because it's useful to obviously see the book itself and the book explains how it works and it starts with a block and what your block is is a set of patterns that fit your body now this is where I'm going to get a bit fancy I'm going to try we'll see I'm going to try and show you in front of me what we're actually looking at so let me find the page in here and I'm going to switch the screen down below so wish me luck no wrong thing there we go okay so you should be able to see the screen in front of me, fingers crossed. So what we have got in the start of the book, for those of you who haven't seen it before, is it shows you that it goes from a pattern piece itself, which is a block, and it goes through to a calico sample, which we call a toile, and then you go to your finished outfit. Now, what you'll be doing is being able to choose a range of necklines, a range of sleeves, and a range of skirts, and you are taught how to pattern cut those in the book. Once you learn the method once, you can do a whole plethora of things, but this is like the starting base for the book. You can also add collars and you can also add pockets, which is pretty cool. So what I'm just gonna show you is what we're working with today. And those of you that haven't seen the book get to have a quick little look through as well. So sorry if the lighting's not great. This is all the first time I'm doing this with this all set up, so it will get better each time I do it. But on pages 32, what we're looking at is this is actually your sewing language. So this is what your block is. You've got a back bodice, a front bodice, a back skirt, and a front skirt. You also have a sleeve, but we don't actually deal with a sleeve until you've made your finished sample and your finished very first toile. And what you have in the back of the book is a range of graded 
nest of patterns. Now that is a size. So you've got say a size 12 that then also goes up to a 14, 16, 18. But also what I should say is this size chart is my, my own bespoke size chart. So it doesn't actually relate to a size. It is bespoke. So therefore the size chart actually runs from what is a UK 6 to 44 but it isn't actually the, the size 12 that you know, it's based on your measurements. So just show you in the back very quickly. This is your size chart and it goes from number one to nine for the first range of patterns and then 10 to 19. All your measurements are in there and this is what you're looking for to try and find the right size to work from. So when you have your graded nest of patterns, it may look like a lot of lines and a lot of colors, but what you are looking for is the one that is nearest to your size. And what you'll find is when a nest is created on a piece of paper from a pattern, your pattern, if you think of your body, your body doesn't actually go. I'm going to split the screen. Let me try this so you get to see a bit of both. Fingers crossed. Does it work? Yay. OK, so when you actually have your block here, if you imagine you're a size 12 and then I'm looking at using the next size up as a size 12, you don't just grow out all over. And therefore your block doesn't actually just have the same amount bigger the whole way around. So if you think our shoulders don't really change our, you know, the actual length here, whether you're a size six or a size 20, there's a small change, but it's not like your shoulder just keeps growing and growing. So this is why the block has got its own set of grading rules between sizes. So I'm not going to go too much into that, but this is what we're going to be working with. I'm just going to have a little look on here. So we've got lots of you turn your volume up hopefully making a wedding oh there's lots of you it's subtitles oh thanks claire for sorting that out amazing um right okay so this is what we're starting with we're actually going to trace off the front bodice and we're also going to trace off trace off the front skirt now what i'm going to do is trace it off as if i were between sizes so i'm going to pop the book aside there I'm going to use a pen for this because it's more, it'd be much easier for you to actually see. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to swap this between, between screens. I'm going to go back to seeing what's at the bottom, fingers crossed. And then we are going to get the actual bodice pattern here. Okay, so what we have, nope, that's the back. Here we go. We are actually going to trace off the front bodice. Now, just for this sample for today, I'm going to go with the smaller sizes because it's all condensed on the screen. And I'm going to trace off sizes number one and number two. Now, that might be because your bust size is the size that you're mainly working towards. And it might be the waist is slightly bigger, slightly smaller. But if you're over a couple of sizes, then I would always trace off the extra size in the side seam. So that's what we're going to do now. And the way I've explained in the book is to place, there's a couple of ways of doing this, but we're going to place the pattern underneath. Now you may not see this very well because obviously tracing off is a little bit difficult to see with all of this light here. But if you have got a light box, you can do that. If you have, um, you can use what you call a, a cut, like a roller. So I can't think of the word, my brain's gone blank. Um, but you can actually place it on top of the tracing wheel and you can actually go around with the tracing wheel as well. But what I do is the old fashioned way and I place this on here. And I'm also going to show you this special tool that a lot of you have been a little bit unsure how to use. So I'm going to show you how it works now as well. Now, hopefully this live is going to go on in, I think about an hour, hopefully. So you can save this. If you don't want to watch the whole thing now, you can come back and watch it again anyway. But let me just check that. Yep, we're still going, which is good. Okay, so I'm going to go around. So I'm going to trace the key elements and just mark them onto the paper. So the very, very first one up here is my little shoulder point. Now I wouldn't usually use a pen. I'd usually use a click pencil because these are super sharp. Okay, these are the best things to use so you get a nice clear point. But just for you to be able to see what we're doing, I'm going to use a pen for now. Now what you're going to do is trace around and just make sure you get all your key features marked in. Now hopefully, i just pull this up a little bit, you'll be able to see. Now it's quite strange not being able to hear anything, but I'm really hoping that you can all hear 
what I'm doing, you see a little bit. I'm just going to come up to the shoulder point and I'm just going to mark all of these important features. Now what you have, if you're unsure what you're looking at, what's useful is to have the book open to the pages so you can see what it is you're actually looking to trace off. So let me find that again for you to see. So on your page 32, it's quite useful to just refer back to what you're actually looking to trace off here. So you've got two darts, a shoulder dart and a waist dart, and you've got your centre front fold. So I'm going to pop that to one side. So where my darts are, I'm just going to mark a small little notch there, and I'm also going to find the little cross in the centre down here, okay? The same thing on the waist dart, which is across here and just find the end of the darts. Now it can look a little bit complicated underneath here. So what I have done, I've pinned it all in place so it doesn't move. And if you do need to have a little check, then you can always lift the paper up and see what it is you're looking at and just replace it back in. So what you can see is the top part. I'll move it up to see the lower bit in a sec. But then it's a case of trying to just do a series of small little dashes on the line that you're looking to work onto. Okay, so I'm going to try and keep the phone out of shot. On your sign feature, can't yes, I'll have to. I'll show you where the videos are if you can't see the feature on the page. So bear with me on that. So we're going to go across here, and we just join up all of these little bits here. Sorry if my head's in the way. And you just draw in the outline of your front bodice on here. So there's not too much to show you with this, it's just a case of getting this, this block onto your pattern paper. Now there is a part about the sizing, I will be doing some videos, which will be some more professional videos to show you about all of the stage of this, but obviously that's going to take a bit of time, but this hopefully will get some of you set up when you are picking out your sizes. I'm going to draw in the dart, and down here. Now it's quite a big shoulder dart, which I have mentioned before, because it means that your waist darts can all match up from the bodice and the skirt, which is really important. So move this up a little bit, so you can see what's going on on the bottom, hopefully. And then this part here, we're just going to join up with a nice straight line because that is your front. What you can also mark on with usually a nice red pen not a blue one, but you've got your symbol for cut on the fold. So you don't have your seam allowance when it's on the fold. Okay, so that's a really important line to put on there. You then match up the bottom, join these little bits. You will have, as I said, underneath here can sometimes get a little bit confusing because you've got lots of lines of where your darts are. So you just need to try and get the base point by lifting your paper a few times to actually see which bit yours you are drawing. And then we go, join that bit. It's a very small little sh shape down here. And then you draw in your dart again. Okay, so at each point when I've done this, I'll have a little look at the comments, see if there's any particular questions. And then the side seam isn't straight on here, so it's just a case, don't assume any line is straight but draw that in and you can also draw in your bust line which is really useful so that you know where that is. Okay, so I'm gonna write that on there. Now, if for some reason your waist is slightly bigger than your, your bust, what I've said in the book is to make sure that you, you make sure that your actual sample and your measurements fit best around your bust because the bust is the one you don't really want to change. I'm gonna go back to split screen to change up for a sec, okay? So with your actual bust itself, you want that to fit you, that's the biggest part. If your bust fits you, you can alter your twirl at your side seams, and I've talked about this a little bit before and the last week's um, live. You take it in on the side seams, so you're taking it in on your side seam from your bodice all the way down to your skirt. What you don't want to be doing is playing around with any of the darts 
on your actual sample or your pattern. So ideally get the bust measurement right and then don't be afraid to play around with the sizes between your waist and your hips. So what I'm going to go with is the fact that this piece, this sample here, is the smaller size in the bust but the hips and the waist are bigger. And I'm going to go with that the waist is one size bigger and the hips are two sizes. So what I'm going to draw in, and this is why I'll go back to the screen now, let's go back to just this one. So what you then do is you actually draw in on the side seam the next size up. You don't have to trace the whole thing off, so you don't have to do the darts, but what you need to do is just make sure that you've got this little side seam marked in here because this is going to be the size bigger on the waist. So the really important thing is whatever bust size you go with, you make sure that those are the dart sizes that you draw on the skirt also. Okay, so this is size number one, so I'm gonna write this on here. Size one, and then on the side where I've drawn the extra, extra side seam, I'm gonna write down size one there, and I'm gonna write size two in the next line, so at least you can see what you're working with. If you're unsure, don't be afraid to label everything up and say size one dart if you need to remember. And then that is all you need for the bodice for a minute. Now you do exactly the same on the back, but now we're done here, what I'm gonna do is just cut this little bit of paper off. Cut around here. And that is your very first block to start with. So what we need to do next is we now need to look at tracing off the front skirt. And that's where I'm gonna show you how you go from the size is going from slightly smaller to bigger and bigger again. So kind of more like a pear shape. So let's have a look at any comments. Has anyone got anything here? Yes, Mary Moore. Sorry, I shouldn't have my phone in here. Hang on a sec. Um, so what have we got? Uh, la la la. Oh, someone's making a wedding dress for their daughter. The bodice, yeah. Joanne, hopefully this will help you, fingers crossed. I'm gonna go back to this. So you've got both here. Okay, so I'm just looking at a few comments. Um, welcome those of you who are just joined as well. You can always rewind this, watch it, save it. You can also click the three buttons in the top corner and you can save this as well, which is really good. So uh, Mary, I want to comment on this as well. Really good point, because if you have your bust actually sitting in a slightly different place as the patterns, bearing in mind these are very very basic patterns, okay? These are not made for anyone in particular. If anything, they were made for, where is she? My little mannequin over here, okay? It looks really tiny in the background. So the mannequin itself is a Kenneth and Linsel mannequin. Oh my gosh, my brain's all tongue tied. A Kenneth and Linsel um, mannequin, and it's a size that I chose to do these charts with. So it's a size 14, um, but it's got a little bit of shape to it. It's got bum, it's got hips, so a bit more of a real person. Now, these were just made to fit that, so they're not made to fit a set size. So if you don't fit the sizes within this, it doesn't mean that you're not the right size. It doesn't mean that you know your bust sits lower and therefore it's wrong. It's not that at all, so please don't ever think that. But what happens is it just allows you to actually have a base block to work from and then you make it to fit you. So what Mary has actually said in here about the bust starts is we were saying that if your bust is sitting slightly lower than here. So say like, if you have a little look on here, okay, I'll just go back into this bit. So when you actually look at these points here, you can see the bust line runs between the two points on there. Now the bust line should sit exactly on the bust. So it should fit on the widest part of the bust. Your darts, the rule is to finish about two centimeters away from the bust point itself. Then what happens is when your dart comes up to your bust, it shouldn't be a real big point, because if those darts came and met at the same point, then you'd have quite a pointy bust. Now for those of you a little bit further ahead, I do suggest in the book to do a cheap method to actually sew this. So I do get you to sew the dart all the way down and to keep running it down, which also eliminates that pointy bit at the end of the darts. But if your dart, well your bust, is sitting a bit lower than this actual bust line here, so say your bust line sits more, you know, another centimetre down, then all you would actually do, you can kind of redraw your bust line a little bit along here. And all you would do is just use that as a point, as your centre bust point. 
and then make sure that those two darts are still two centimeters from either side. So all you would do is on here, I would measure two centimeters from that new line. I'm gonna draw this in a red pen so you can see if I can find it. Have I got a red pen? Yes, I have got a red pen. So if you can do this little alteration, I'm gonna redraw and say, right, the bust is gonna sit ever so slightly lower on here. So from this point, I'm gonna mark two centimeters up and two centimeters down from there. And that becomes your new cross for the end of the dart. And then you can just redraw your dart. So you just redraw that, you can redraw that. Same thing here, you just redraw this lower bit. So then your new darts are sitting slightly lower, but there's still the same distance between them. So that's all it is. When it's on paper, it's a really, really simple alteration. When it's on fabric, it's really confusing. So I hope that makes sense a little bit. Um, fingers crossed. Um, another one on here, very narrow shoulders, very large bust. So Deborah, you would just need to actually look at fitting the bodice to your bust measurement, to your widest, widest bust measurement, and then do all the fitting and taking it in around that point. If you do have a large bust, you might find you'll have, let me put this back on here, hang on a sec. You might find if you have a, a large bust, you probably more than likely will have a gaping armhole. And that is discussed on, where is it? I'm in the advanced section in here as well. I'm just gonna show you this a little bit. So advanced pattern alterations on page 86. So if you do have a large bust, you more than likely may have a little bit of gape on the armhole, which is fine. It's a really simple method of actually taking that fullness out. Hang on, I've just done that again. So when you have this section on page 86, it actually shows you how to take that fullness out. So I did a little demonstration last week on the actual mannequin itself. And then this is the alteration that you would do to actually take that fullness out. And it's a little method of kind of just literally pivoting that fullness into your dart. So it's really, really clever, really simple. So hopefully Deborah, that will help you. Fingers crossed. Okay, uh, let me just see any other comments on here. Mary, thank you, brilliant. Okay. So what we'll do now, I'm just gonna go and trace the skirt off and then this is where the magic happens. So I'm gonna take this back off and go solo on there. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take away this part. So we're actually gonna take the front bodice and put it safely to one side. We will take away the blocks. So you don't ever trace these, you don't ever cut these. Never, never cut them because couple of reasons why if you make a mistake you won't have anything to go back to as a base but also this this then allows you as a tool to be able to make to any different size so this is also a really good book if you're a student you're a dressmaker you've got a whole range of sizes to work from right okay so what we've now got we've now got the front skirt so i'm going to pull that down a little bit so you can see that I will definitely get the lighting sorted next week, the next time I get to do this. For those of you who don't know as well, I do have little three-year-old toddlers, so when I get a little bit tongue-tied, it's mainly because my brain is a little bit tired <laughs> from having a little toddler. Jane, I'm glad you're loving the camera work. I mean, this is a little bit rough and ready today, but it will get better. I'm quite excited to use this. I've been too afraid to use this for quite a long time, but today I thought that's it, I'm biting the bullet. I'm doing it. Right, pattern master. Again, the pattern master will come into play in a little bit as well. You'll see what all these lines and things on here mean. So, Mary, hope that makes sense. So the next part then, so what I'm gonna do, because we looked at tracing off, a size one. I'm going to put this where you may be able to just see if I pull this down a little bit here. You might be able to just see that we actually traced off the size one and the size two. The size one was the bust that we needed. The size two was nearer the waist measurement that we needed. So what I'm now going to do is trace off the skirt. But I'm actually going to trace off the size two so that the 
darts match up. It's really important that you do that. So hopefully my head's not gonna get in the way again. So you're just gonna trace off this part. Such a tiny pattern. Oh, so little on this size. This is a UK six. And then again, if you're unsure what you're looking at up here, I'm just gonna follow that line up, which is this one. If you're unsure what you're looking at, don't be afraid to peel this back. Try and see which one you're working with. And once you've got the line that you know you're working with, repin it in place so it doesn't move. Okay. And then you're going to join up all the bits along here. Now you might hear the Welsh rain in the background. There's lots of it at the moment. Okay, so then you're gonna match up here and here. And down here and down here. So this now, I'm gonna label it is size one dart. And that you know is then going to match your bodice. Okay, so that's really important when you do match up your center, that is the dart that you're working with. So even if you trace off a different size in your skirt, make sure that your darts are the same sizes. So this now is your size number one. Now what we said was the waist was the next size up. So I'm gonna also trace off the side seam of the next size up. and we'll just draw that in. But what I also said was that the hips were the next size up again. So the hips were nearer the size three. So I'm also going to trace off the size three. Okay, so don't stress if you are between sizes. I'm gonna draw in the hip line, which is really useful because that is where the size three needs to be. And what you're going to start to see, I'm just going to cut away a bit of excess off this pattern piece. This is the easy bit. Now this is the bit you don't know. This is where it makes sense, fingers crossed. I'm just going to have a quick little look on here. What have we got? Father's jaw, do we need one of these gadgets? Uh, the Pattern Master, Joanne, the Pattern Master's amazing. The only problem I've got with the Pattern Master is I can't find it wholesale. So if I buy it in, I'm buying it in at cost price and then it costs me more to package it because it's such a difficult size. So until I can find it at a decent price, um, you can get it from More Plan and William G are the two. So bear with me if I can get this, but it is brilliant. It's different to a French curve, and I'm gonna show you how it comes into its own towards the end of this demo as well. Um, will I have to make another twirl? Mary, I have to say, I love it because you call it a twirl, and it makes me laugh every time. I'm just gonna put this back on here for a sec. I'm just having a little look at the comments. So Mary Moore, it's brilliant. You, you call it, you, it's a twirl, so it's T-O-I-L-E, and it's a twirl, which is a French word for a sample. But Mary, I think I'm going to use twill from now on because I absolutely love it. It makes me smile every time. Um, you can try another twill. It, it's useful. You can always unpick the bodice. You could and just you could then replace the darts and redraw them. Or if it's easier, it's sometimes easier just to actually make up a new one so you can actually then see the difference between the two. So, um, what's the other comment? Dot and cross paper. Dot and cross paper is useful. I'm not using it for that for a minute. I'm using the other plain side, but I love the fact that you have dot and cross on the side that you will need to pattern draft later when you were doing your, your sleeves and your collars, necklines and things. I do sell it on the website as well as Calico and all of the other tools. You can get a part master in my kits though, in the bronze, not the bronze, there's gold and platinum kits, which have got everything you possibly need to get started in. So you can get one of those in there. Um, let me just see. Someone had it correct toilet yesterday. So rather than a toilet, it was a toilet. Um, I've heard that before. That's quite funny. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, it's raining. It's raining everywhere, I think, isn't it? Uh, Joanne, it's, I'm really glad you're enjoying that. You find it really useful. Camera work, brilliant. I mean, it is going to get better. I promise it will. And it will be much better lighting as well. Uh, right. Okay. So I think... I'm gonna crack on with the next bit. If there's anything that is vital, throw it at me and I'll have a little look through here. No, Mary, I just see your laughing face. Please keep it as a twill. Brilliant, I love it. Okay, now then, just to recap. So we have traced off 
the front bodice. And if I pull this down so you can see, because I want you to be able to see all of this. Okay, so we've traced off the front bodice, size one to fit the bust is massively important, size two because the waist was bigger. And then on the skirt, we've actually traced off the size one, two and three. So it looks scary, but you're not actually tracing everything off. You're only adding in the side seams. And what we're gonna do now, what I might do, I might just cut along here. So I'm gonna cut along the bottom of this to just show you how it all mat matches up, okay? Which I wouldn't normally do, but this will make a little bit more sense. Oh, Wendy Webb sits really hot in Spain. Don't rub it in, don't rub it in. It's still warm, but really, really rainy. Right, let's zoom back in so you can see this properly. Okay, so this is what you're looking at. Let's put this down ever so slightly more, okay? So what you can see is when you do actually marry these up together later on, once you add seam allowance, so I will come back to that seam allowance later as well. Oh, I forgot my other, I'm using my other house phone and he's now got all sports things coming through. Sorry about that. Um, should have muted that, but I don't dare touch the phone because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> an iPhone anymore. Right, front size one. Size one is running through here. So I'm going to pin this together as well. Pin here. And I suppose what I probably need is just another colour pen. So I'm going to maybe just do this in the red. So I know that I want the bust to be size one. So I'm going to keep that line up there. And I know that I want the waist is slightly bigger nearer the size two. Now this is so that you'd still probably need to alter it slightly on your 12, but it's just a case of putting it on and taking fullness out. If you try and be really accurate with your measurements, you might make it a little bit too fitted. So it's always good to go too big than too small. But what we're gonna do, very, very simply, go from the bust measurement, and you just graduate a nice new line down to meet the next size you're working with. Now bear in mind we don't have odd shapes to us so therefore you want a nice gradual line, you don't want angles and you'll see that that line has come down, just move this little pin, so I'm going to draw that in properly so you can see, I'm just going to curve slightly round, okay so that now you can see there is your new line running down from number one through the bust point of size one down to what is number two. And the next part is saying, well, actually the hips are a little bit bigger, so I want to be looking at more size three for the hips. So hopefully you all know what we're doing now is you're going to come down here and you're just gonna very nicely and gradually take this line out to meet your hip line. So from your hip line, it just goes quite straight. So if I draw this back in so you can see a bit better as well. Obviously I'd just be doing this in pencil, not in the pen. And then the rest of the skirt, you can trace off then in the size three. So this is how you actually work between sizes. So if your hips are smaller, what you would do, so who's just asked that there, so Sarah right? so it's just the other way around. Always work with your bust. If you need to go out, it's just a case of drawing each size that you're working with. And you're either going out, or say you were size two bust and you, you go into a size one, then you would just draw it in here to the waist and then just carry on with that. So it's just all about joining these lines in a natural curve, whether you're adding in or you're taking away. I really hope that that makes some sense to you, fingers crossed. Because it is a scary thing to be altering, but if you can alter these at the early stage, it's really, really, really good. So I'm hoping you can see that, fingers crossed quite well, how it's gone. And then what you would just do, you just lose these lines, the ones that you haven't used, and you stick with that one main line there. And what I'm gonna do is take this away. Obviously I've cut the bottom off there, so I won't use that pattern piece for a minute. But those of you asking about seam allowance, let me show you the joy of this pattern master, which I absolutely love. I'll take this off. Now, I haven't actually traced the lower part of this, so let me just do that really quick. 
Let me just check that. So that's the thing. When you take it off, it's always harder to fit back on. So I'm just going to trace the lower part of this off, which is now a size three. I'm going to make it a mini skirt, so it's actually going to come to here. Always lose my pattern master. Buried under there. And we'll just square that off there, just for the sake of the sample, okay? Let's take away. Take this away. I'm just going to cut the excess off from around here as well so you can see a little bit better what I'm working with. So then when you've actually done any alterations that you need to do on your pattern pieces, it's then a case of adding your seam allowance on because there's no seam allowance at this stage for the, all the alterations that you are doing. So, oh, I'm glad it's making sense to those of you who are saying. Thank you, demonstrate, excellent. Oh, good, 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 good. Okay, we're gonna add the seam allowance on. Now this, this is why it's really important to draw in things when it's a cut on the fold because it's very easy to not remember what you've done and you might add seam allowance where you don't need it. Okay, so cut on the fold for this line that runs down the center. And do that. And then when you're ready to add seam allowance, this is why this is brilliant. Now this pattern mask, it does come in metric and it does also come in imperial. So it's whatever you prefer to work with. Personally, I prefer centimetres. Um, if you add a centimetre and a half on, which I think is a quarter of an inch roughly, you've got a lot more seam allowance to play with. So it's a good for a sample, but I find sometimes the seam allowance can be a little bit too misguided if it's too big, but it's personal choice. But what I'm gonna do here is add on the seam allowance. So if you look at the ruler itself, I'll show you under here, hopefully. You can see you've got the centimetres marked down the edge and you've got the lines here. You've also got these lovely 45 degree angles, which are useful. And what we're gonna do, oops, get rid of those pins. So when you, I'm gonna add one centimetre onto here. So it's just a case. Just remember, don't use a pen. This is just for the demonstration, use a pencil. Can you see how easy it is now to just draw in your seam allowance without having to like measure your one centimetre along everything. It's really, really, really good. Oh, I love this, lots of light bulbs going off. Yay, happy days, happy days. Uh, let me just see, so Mandy said, makes more sense now, what if your hips are four sizes smaller than the waist? I would potentially, Mandy, if it's four sizes smaller, it depends if you're gonna wear something really, let me put it back so you can see me talking as well before I carry on with that. If you're, if there's a massive difference between your, your waist and your hips, unless you really want to wear a really slim fitted skirt where you are then going to really taper it and fit you, I would probably just do it maybe one or two sizes smaller. You, you don't want a crazy angle that's kind of going right in to fit, you know, to take that fullness in. It's okay for your twirl to be a little bit too big, especially your hips, because when you choose your skirts, you've got four options that the book will guide you through. You start with a skirt block, but you usually alter that um, so it doesn't have to be that fit. It's the guide for your, your lower part. If you're making something you like wearing it quite slim fitted, then yes, try and alter it to fit you well. But sometimes it's easier to just put your twirl on being too big and taper it in. So I hope that makes a little bit of sense. Fingers crossed. Right, I'm gonna just go back to this. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you, we're not adding seam allowance on on the side there, or the, sorry, the centre front. And again, it's always good to just mark everything as well, centre front. You've written your dark, your dark corresponds to your bodice. Now where this new red line is, this is the line that we're now going to be working with. This is your new line. So I'm going to add my seam allowance on there. And you can also then use the curves of the pattern master, which is quite handy as well. So this is why this is quite good. I'm used to kind of turning it as I go. It's pretty much my third hand. So that now is your new piece, okay? So you, that is, you are now working with this where you've got your size two waist, your size three hips, and then you would do exactly the same on the bodice. So you would add your seam allowance onto the side here. 
Now with the sample, what I have said to, I kind of, we're thinking about what we would add into a reprint and there's only a few little things I would change. But what I, I don't know if I have said it, but when you make up your sample, you can avoid adding seam allowance on your neck and your armhole to start off with because it gives you a much better idea of the fit of the armhole without having your seam allowance on. And your neckline, there's not many times where your neckline is that really high type shape, um, high neck shape. So really you, you then amend that neckline anyway from that point. Okay, so I'm just gonna have a quick look at comments here. Um, in Spain, I'm not sure about pattern masters. Leave it with me, Jennifer, asking about pattern masters because it's something where I need to look into, okay? So feel free to nag me on that one. And um, where do I adjust the pattern, please? I'm only five foot two, so shorter shoulder to waist. So what do you tend to do? There are pages in the book which talk you through. So Susan asking that question there. In right at the start, there's, oh, pure, page 54. Let me just go back onto it. There is a page on 54 if you are petite, equally if you are tall on the page before. And what you would actually do, I can do a really quick demo on that now, actually, because we've got a bit of time. Because I've done, let me just trace some pattern. I've done everything I was going to do. So if I just show you this one really quickly as an end one. Bearing in mind, whatever you do on the front bodice and skirt, on the sides, you do exactly the same on the back. Really, really important that you follow through the same rules. So make a note of what you're doing as you go through. Um, so if you are doing, making it shorter in the body, and this worked as well as if the back of your pattern, say a lot of people have had a, quite a lot of fullness on the actual back, um, centre back. So this might be something I'll do another day, but it's the same method of this, where I think in the book, I just kind of said, just chop it off the bottom. Um, but with hindsight, you then start affecting this dart. So then it doesn't match if you want to actually get it to match. Um, the reason why you want your darts to match, because if you do choose to have a seam that runs all the way down from the shoulder, through the bust, down through the waist, which is more a straight dress, then you want these to match up. So otherwise, the alterations you would do, and what I'm going to do is just cut around this to give you a much clearer idea of what it looks like. Cut around here. So this is cutting this without seam allowance. And then you can retrace this with seam allowance afterwards. One shoulder narrower than the other. So if you if you are slightly different, I mean everyone is, no one is actually symmetrical, and I've made Gosh, I've made like hundreds of clothes over the years and lots and lots of bridal wear, which is a really like intimate process of measuring and making something fit you. And not not many people are exactly accurate. You know, it's kind of symmetrical. So if you do find that you are different one side to the other, but it's a big change, you would need to work with, you'd need to just copy your pattern piece so you have a left and a right to work from. So rather than just working on a half, you'd actually trace off the other side as well. So you'd have like a butterfly thing. You'd, you'd actually have the whole front to show and then you would change them accordingly for the left and the right shoulders. If it's only a minor thing, I would keep it all symmetrical and then make a note that when you actually make your sample up, then you can just take off what you need of that shoulder, which is sometimes a little bit easier. Okay, so this is your piece here. Let me just have another look in comments. Great practical, excellent, I'm glad you'll find it useful. Okay, so if we're gonna take the last little bit of demo, because we're nearly at like the hour point, so it's a chance to ask a few questions. If you've got any questions, think of them now. Don't send them just yet, <laughs> but in the next minute or two. What I'm just gonna show you is if you're actually going to shorten or extend the bodice. What you don't wanna do is just chop it off the bottom because it affects all of this fit here. So if you start chopping it off the bottom, you're then affecting the, the waist and the dart here. So you need to draw a parallel line across here. And again, this is where you've got the beauty of this pattern master for show you here, where you've got a nice line, 90 degree line. And you just need to draw that parallel across here. So you do it in that pen. And then if you know you need to take out, say two centimeters, out of the actual length of the bodice, if you are used to doing that with your clothes, then what you would do is 
do a line two centimeters parallel and then you just fold on that very first line that you did and then to take that two centimeters out you just join your lines and if you think that that was that two or 1.5 that was two and then that becomes a new pattern piece and all you'd need to do is just redraw that line so it's nice and straight to your darts equally if you're tall well before we do that actually um if you are going to take a little bit of fullness out of the back pattern it's the same method for this but if you find you've got more fullness on the back than you have on the side then it might be that you take out more like like a triangle wedge so it might be that you actually just take out like you would just draw a line that was meeting up at the same point you didn't affect the side but you take out what you needed to take out of this section and then you would again just redraw the kind of repin this section and you would just need to realign your darts okay so that's if you are taking fullness out but hopefully you won't need to do that too much but if you're tall what you would do and this is where I have to do it all the time if you're tall you would cut along your line and then you would just add in the measurement throughout there so you would just pop a little paper, bit of paper behind you would make sure that when you actually put this on to here you would tape it down in place which I will just pin for a sec so you can see and if you're adding it's usually about two and a half centimeters is the rule this is again what this pattern master use is good for then you would then just add in your two and a half you'd straighten out the, the seam there so it continues down and you just replace your pattern piece on there and you've now added length into your bodice without affecting the dart or the side seam and you just join those lines up easy as that okay so i'm going to go now i'm going to go back onto the I'll just go back onto myself for a minute. Hang on, there we go. So, just gonna have a little look at your comments on here as well. So, you just see, if I add, do you add seam allowance on the shoulder? Yes, you add your seam allowance on the shoulder pattern when you're actually altering, um, when you finish doing the alterations. Um, do I need to move? I need to do a forward shoulder, or do you mean a full shoulder adjustment? forward shoulder adjustment how would I do this with a shoulder dart um you would just if you need to take a little bit off the front I'm assuming you could rather than affect the shoulder you could just actually do a nice straight line across hang on a sec I haven't put that on so if you are doing a shoulder adjustment you can use that same rule you could just do a little line across there and you can actually just fold a bit of fullness out of it if that's a bit easier so it's kind of once you know some of the basic rules it's same kind of thing um, does the bottom edge represent the waist? I'm high waisted, long bodied. Where did you draw the line one line I was typing? I'm not quite sure what you mean there. Um, that was, or oh, the very first line you mean. The first line is just somewhere. When you're looking to shorten the bodice or lengthen it, you're just drawing a line that's that 90 degrees to the centre front across there. And that's your basis then for either folding in fullness or adding into it. Um, five foot tall always need shorten patterns. Hopefully all the things that you're going to learn from from the book means that you can then take these rules and take them over. Let me put it back on myself. Hang on. So once you've got all of this done, you can actually take all of these instructions that, that you learn and the pattern cutting rules and take those forward to other patterns that you've got. So the rules of taken in is always on the side seams if you have a gaping hole on a gaping hole oh gosh it's definitely time to go uh, and go make a cup of tea um if you have a gaping armhole then that is the same method for taking out so hopefully that will help you do that on future patterns and you can tweak the pattern without having to actually sew a dart into the the gaping part on the armhole um if you have shortness that you need to make it shorter in the body or longer again those rules you go to the paper pattern rather than having to try and backtrack and and actually work on the calico which is really difficult so it's a kind of a new way of doing it and what the book is teaching you is pretty much everything i've learned as a designer and how to work right from the beginning because if a bride came through the door now i would go i would use the book 
I would use the patterns in the book, I would use the measurements, I would use the chart and I would start with the blocks and then I would start to adapt the whole pattern. So what you've got is the tools to be, you know, kind of be a designer and have a play and, and get the basics. But bear in mind that it's taken me a long time to train to do this as well. So those of you who are kind of finding sometimes a little bit hard, a little bit frustrating, hopefully as more people are doing it on the group, then more and more people can kind of jump in and help and, oh, I had that experience and how can I, you know, this is what I did to fix it. Um, if you bear in mind that it is just myself, so unfortunately I can't reply to those who've messaged me personally and it's just, there's just so many in the group now and so many messages coming through that I would love to help you all personally. But I can't right now, but I am looking, as I said, to set some online sessions up. I've maxed out the diary at the moment. There's only one workshop, um, a seven week one on a Friday morning in Swansea that's available. There is one place on in January in Pembrokeshire, which is, a, there's two places actually in Pembrokeshire, which is a really fabulous destination to go on a holiday. So I will post those on here as well. But the next thing really is me trying to get some online content and to help you all in this way. So it will take a bit of time, but hopefully the lives will get you working and on track until those kind of videos come out. So bear with me. So before I go, I've just got a couple of minutes. I'm just going to see what those of you are saying. I uh, you know, same point in the course. Fabulous demonstration, I hope so. Uh, when's the next demo? I don't know. I need to look at my diary because it is summer holidays and I have a toddler who is quite exhausting. Um, brilliant, exhausting, but exhausting. So bear with me, I'll just check the diary and work that out and get back to you. Um, Cheryl seems sits too far back, not on my natural show design. So yes, Judy, hopefully that makes sense for you. Um, definitely find you so easy to understand. I wish you lived in Spain. I'll do holidays. If anyone wants to pay for me to go abroad, let me know. We'll do a family holiday and I'll do one-to-one. -one. <laughs> Sounds lovely. Um, no, but seriously, online. Hopefully we'll get some nice online things soon. Um, just checking what everyone else is saying. I find it very really hard, but don't yet. Yeah, Mary, don't give up. Don't give up. There are plenty of people. Just, I think you did the video online earlier, didn't you? So it looked really, really good. So hopefully there's more and more people that can just dip in and go, yeah, that's brilliant. Try this, try this alteration. But as I said, it, you know, it takes a long time. So, you know, don't be hard on yourself. Keep at it. Uh, Sewing's middle name is frustrating, 100%. Totally agree with that. Um, glad you're liking the lies. Fast greats, exactly how to create sizes. Um, brilliant, brilliant. So any questions, fire them over really quick. You've got to think about a minute. Phyllis, um, I personally use a one centimetre seam allowance. Um, Sometimes 1.5, you've got a little bit more room to play with when you're doing your sample, so that's quite good. Um, this has been the best session. Elaine, I'm hoping it's good because I'm getting these cameras set up, so it's, again, work in progress. Bear with me. Uh, two cameras been really helpful. Good, good, good. Take care of family too. Absolutely, I need a spa day next. That's the next thing to do. So, I think, I think that is everything. That's what I wanted to cover today anyway, so I hope really hope it's been useful there's a there's so much in the book that i can i can demo so the main thing is getting you all up and running at this stage um if there's other bits that i can demo within the book i'm going to have a good good think about what will be useful next i'm going to get this a little bit more set up for next week as well and then hopefully then we can have you know i can show you how you draft the collar how you do the neckline and faces and things like that eventually i'm planning to do things like you know how to insert a zip but I have got one, I think I've demoed that on Sewing Street in the past. So there's there's so much stuff that I need to do. Just need to clone myself. So bear with me. Just seeing last little bit. Excellent. Okay, can we see the dress you're wearing? Right, I'm gonna step back. Da -da -da. This is, I, don't, I need to put it on portrait. So this is my dress that I wore for my book launch. So don't, I'm gonna go really far back now. Da -da -da. This is a circle skirt. And it is a boat neckline, and you've got my favourite, which is the butterfly sleeves, which I've got two layers on. So it is super, super easy to do. And the great thing with a circle skirt is you add underskirts, and then you just want to twirl. It's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Um, so yes, get your brawny back out. I know, I know, I absolutely need to do that. Okay, now hopefully next time. I will have a new, maybe a new dress to wear, who knows, but I will post about the lives and uh, just 
yeah, if you've got any suggestions, ideas, maybe just kind of put them on this thread. I will be, as I said, posting books Monday, Tuesdays. If you haven't got your book yet, please pre-order it because there's only, I think, 50 left. And I don't know how easy it will be to get them once they're sold out because they are pretty much allocated. So uh, let me know. But I really hope you have found it all useful. Thank you so much for watching. Um, thank you for interacting. Thank you for supporting the group. And fingers crossed you all have a lovely new dress very soon. But I will be back doing a live next week, so I will post the date very soon. And for those of you in the UK, enjoy the semi B final. Enjoy. I'm going to go make a cup of tea, and I'm going to do that. So thank you for watching. Just need to work out how to end this. I don't think I've even done that bit yet. So <laughs> hopefully I'll do that. So thanks ever so much, everybody. I will uh, see you next week.